today, and thank you to Liz for asking me to speak. Um, I don't know if, about being super healthy, um, but I do try to um, eat as healthy as I can. But um, today we're really going to try to focus on um, looking at food as ways to nourish our body. So I'm not here to turn you all into vegans or vegetarians, but to just kind of take a step back and really look at food for what it is, like looking at it as single ingredients, putting those single ingredients together and making some wonderful food. Okay, so that's how we're going to look at it on a positive way because we get bombarded sometimes about you know, how much sugar and carbs and fat and are in it, are the foods we eat and those things are important but sometimes it's just nice to enjoy food for what it is because eating should be fun. Right? It's fun to eat, uh, but kind of that cliche of, you know, we should um, not live, we should, you know, eat to live instead of living to eat, which, which is fun too. But. So, um, like Liz said, I, I am a nurse here at EVIA, and I primarily work downstairs in pre-admission, kind of getting people ready for surgery. I don't, you know, talk about nutrition in my daily job, but I really love talking about food and nutrition, and I love to cook and bake, so that's, I guess, why Liz asked me to, me to come, and, and um, I, I'm married to my husband, Sean, and we have two kids, um, and like Liz said, um, I don't always introduce myself as, hi, I'm Daphne, I'm a vegetarian, because people get a little, like, oh, little stereotype, and, um, and, you know, my, my children um, still consume meat, my husband consumes meat, uh, so I live in the real world, not everyone around me eats exactly the way I do, but um, eating the way I do does introduce my children uh, to some new and unique food. Uh, my husband, when he married me, uh, thought that he was going to uh, be able to eat meat every night, it's all good, and he still does, uh, but his mo he grew up in a family, um, his mom was a vegan or vegetarian for most of his life, so much to his dismay, he will say, you know, he thought he was uh, getting away from that, and, and voila, a couple years after we were married, I kind of made that switch. So I've been eating this way for about 10 years, um, and during those 10 years, um, I also started running, so that's kind of pretty much how I met Liz, is through running. Um, in those 10 years, um, even eating this way, I uh, completed five marathons and lots of miles um, and really, really enjoyed it. So as a vegetarian, um, I get asked a question almost all the time. I get asked a lot about what I'm eating, um, like in the lunchroom, people like to ask me what I'm eating and I like to, you know, I like to share what I'm eating um, with other people, but I get asked one question almost all the time. Does anyone <laughs> want to take a guess at that? Where do you get your protein? No, oh, voila! <laughs> you get the A for the day. Where do you get your protein, right? So we all need protein. We need protein, especially if you're exercising, right? Um, and protein is hot out in the media. I mean, you can't pick up almost any food now without it saying 10 grams of protein, 25 grams of protein. It's really hot, kind of like, you know, way back in the 80s, 90s, it was like no fat, no carbs, and that was all printed um, on our label. So now it's protein, protein, protein. So there it, there is protein in almost everything that we eat. Almost everything that comes from the ground, plant products, your beans, legumes, your nuts and seeds, all have protein. So protein, like we said, is important for our muscles. Protein is made up of um, little building blocks, I like to think of them. They're called amino acids. So uh, we'll just quickly go over that so you can kind of, so you know where I'm coming from and kind of can really buy into the fact that the food here is loaded with protein and there's no animal products. So um, protein contains amino acids. There's lots of amino acids in your proteins. Nobody really questions when you're eating a steak, is that a complete protein or an incomplete protein. And what I mean by that is there's um, amino acids that are called essential amino acids. So our body can produce amino acids, but there are essential amino acids that our body cannot produce. We have to consume them. Um, and there are nine essential amino acids. So in order for a food to be considered a complete protein, it needs to have all those nine essential amino acids in the food. So if it's lacking one, it's considered an incomplete protein. So way back 10 years ago when I started this new um, you know, trend, I'm going to be a vegetarian, I'm not going to eat any meat, um, it, they were really... Um, 
big on you had to have complete proteins in every meal. So you had to take, say, your black beans and combine it with your, like a corn. So black beans and corn together create uh, a complete protein. But now many years later, much research later, um, they now realize that as long as you're eating a well-balanced diet and you know eating lots of different plants and um, you know green leafy vegetables and you're having beans and you're having um, some nuts and seeds and different foods, you combine those throughout your day and voila, you get lots and lots of protein. Okay, so um, one thing that I do not use in my my cooking um, when I when I'm eating specifically is eggs. And um, I have a funny story about that, which I'll share another time to keep things short. But yeah, so I do not um, consume eggs. So that can be a little um, trying when, you know, you're going to the Betty Crocker cookbook and the cookie, all the cookie recipes call for eggs. Two eggs, two eggs. You know, you're baking a cake, it calls for eggs, right? So what do you do? I don't eat eggs. I can get a fancy box of stuff called egg replacer, which is like powdery stuff. Um, that you can mix up and make an egg, but you can make a really fun egg um, with flaxseed. So anybody here eat flaxseed or have flaxseed in their fridge? Flaxseed oil. Oh, good. So flaxseed. So flaxseed comes, um, you know, like this, and uh, you want to buy it in seed form, and you want to grind it yourself. And the reason you want to grind it yourself um, right before you use it is because it has omega-3 fatty acids in it, and um, and lots of other nutrition. You know, it has protein in it. Um, it has fiber in it. Um, but when you when you buy it ground, um, I, I ground this at home just so we want um, to save some time. But when you buy it ground, it can lose a lot of its nutritional value. So buy it in the seed. Use like a coffee grinder or, you know, um, spice grinder or something to grind up your flaxseed um, into your powder and then use it. So in order to make a flaxseed egg, and I showed this to some Girl Scouts, um, they were grossed out. They're like, oh, that's so gross. We made our own pasta, uh, which was fun, and, and our own sauce, so that was, that was a fun time. But you take a tablespoon of flaxseed, ground flaxseed, and three tablespoons of water, doesn't have to be exact. I don't usually measure. Just mix it all together. And you mix it all together and you let it sit. Okay, so it looks like this. If you're using it as an egg and not just adding, you know, ground flax to whatever you want to use it, uh, whatever you want to put it on, you do want to let it sit. Okay, so as, um, as it sits, it's going to turn into this. Okay, so it turns into this kind of blobby little mess, okay? It doesn't look that appetizing, but what this is going to do in your food is going to bind your food like an egg, okay? So you're getting protein and you're getting your flaxseed, your fiber, omega-3 fatty acids here in this little glob. So even if you do eat eggs, that's great, that's fine, but you know, so you want to make your cookies and you don't have eggs and you don't feel like running to the store, but you have some flaxseed, you can grind it up, you can make your own egg. And it's kind of fun and it's a great way to get some really good nutrition in your body. Get some flaxseed um, in, in, your, in your body. The other way you can make one of those eggs, magic eggs we call them, um, are with chia seeds. Anybody eat chia seeds, sprinkles, chia seeds? We sprinkle chia seeds on everything. My kids like chia seeds because they don't really have much of a taste. They have a little bit of a crunch, and they're super tiny. I don't know if you can see that. But you can also do the same thing with this. You can grind up your chia seeds, um, and you can add the water, and it makes this little magic egg. Um, but chia seeds, you know, I, I find it's just easier to grind up the, the flax seeds. So um, that's why I demoed the, the flax seed egg. Go ahead. So the role of the egg... And mm -hmm. baking is to hold it together. It helps to bind. It helps to bind your binder. food together. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah. So um, your flaxseed will do that. Um, when you make your flaxseed egg, it will do that as well for you. So next thing we're going to um, talk about um, is uh, making an apple salad. So we're going to make an apple salad that contains... Um, Protein and this is really yummy. You can use it as a snack um, or as a dessert. So um, I diced up some apples 
and I just sprinkled it with some um, lemon juice. For this amount of apples, I did use um, a half of a pretty large lemon. Uh, sometimes I add the lemon, sometimes I don't, um, but because I didn't want them to turn completely brown, um, I did add quite a bit of lemon to this. Um, so what you're going to do after you have your apples all diced up is you're going to add um, some yogurt, okay? So I brought some soy yogurt just because, I don't know, has anybody ever had soy yogurt? Um, it is yummy. I do enjoy it. Um, however, the reason I chose this brand is because there is quite a bit of sugar in this. So that's one of the things where I say, you know, sometimes we have these preconceived ideas of, oh, she's a vegetarian, she must be super healthy. But I'm telling you, like, I can eat chips, and I ate some peanut M&Ms at Liz's, you know what I mean? So um, sometimes I do eat those foods. I eat real foods, yes, Liz. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, Guilty. And like, uh, yeah. So I'm telling her secrets now. So anyway, so you really want to, you do want to take a look at, at your of uh, the food that you're eating. So even if it says, you know, um, it's vegetarian or it's vegan or it's soy, doesn't mean that you don't have to just look at it. So um, this one does contain a, a quite a bit of sugar. It would not be my first pick, but. Um, we are going to use it um, today like as a, as a dessert. So you're just going to add whatever kind of yogurt you want to use. You want to use the Greek yogurt. Sometimes Greek um, in this salad is a little more difficult because it's so pasty. So sometimes it's better just to use, you know, regular vanilla uh, yogurt, whatever kind that you want. So we're going to add that. We're going to add both, both containers. Okay, so you're getting protein um, with your soy yogurt, right? So you're getting protein with your soy. Mix that up. Kids love this, by the way. Um, people just use like, and it, it's nothing that's unusual. Um, it's ingredients that people are familiar with, and there's lots of apples, so. So you're gonna mix that up really well. Um, and the next thing you're going to add to that um, are some uh, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds full of amazing nutrients. Um, I do use raw pumpkin seeds. I get them uh, at the health food store around 45. I guess that's okay to say. Um, so I get them uh, locally, and uh, we're just going to pour those in. That adds a really nice crunch, okay? Pumpkin seeds um, are awesome. Uh, to add to, if you make your own granola bars, um, get some raw pumpkin seeds and add up. Really high in potassium and a lot of other nutrients. So you have your pumpkin seeds. We're going to um, next add our chia seeds. So you all get to taste this. Um, if you're you know, adventurous and you want to taste something. Uh, so we're going to add our chia seeds in, and feel free to go ahead and just throw those in. Now, chia seeds, um, like your flax seed, when you add them to something that's liquid or you add some moisture to them, they kind of puff up, okay? So if you're, adding, if you're going to grind up some flax seed and add it to your smoothie or add chia seeds to your smoothie, um, it is going to make it um, thicken up. So just be aware of that. If you're going to consume your smoothie right away, um, it's, you know, you can add it, but just uh, be aware because these little guys, you can actually make pudding with these because they just create, um, so, you know, they, they create, um, that, oh, what do I want to say? Um, that texture, they, they create that texture when they're added to that liquid. Um, and we're going to add some cinnamon. Let's see how, oh, that's not pretty good. Now, cinnamon, um, my new favorite thing with cinnamon uh, again, you can kind of need a spice grinder, but um, get your own cinnamon sticks, okay? Buy the cinnamon sticks, grind your own cinnamon. It takes literally like a minute. Now, you may go partly deaf, you know? You may want to put some earplugs in because it is really, really loud when you grind these, um, grind your own cinnamon. Um, but it has such um, a great taste um, when you do that. So you just add your cinnamon and mix it all together and you have this really super yummy apple salad that has protein in it. Okay, lots and lots of protein. So we will, after class, you can all taste that. Um, one thing um, that I started using um, a few years ago is uh, buckwheat. Um, anybody ever have buckwheat pancakes? Use, eat scrapple. Um, so I grew up on a farm, 
we butchered, you know? My parents made scrapple. They put buckwheat flour in the scrapple. Who knew, you know? Who knew this buckwheat is so good for you? Um, buckwheat is like a superfood. It's out there and people just don't really know how to use it, okay? These, uh, this is buckwheat in um, like the seed form. So when people hear buckwheat, they think, ooh, wheat, right? So um, maybe you're following, trying to um, decrease the amount of gluten in your diet. Anybody here doing gluten-free? So if you, you know, or you have friends that are, you know, gluten-free or trying to reduce the gluten, you can eat buckwheat because guess what? It just has a silly name. There's no wheat in it. Um, there's no gluten. It does not contain gluten, okay? It's actually related to rhubarb or sorrel. Sorrel's like, um, almost looks like a spinach leaf. So this is actually a fruit seed. There is no gluten in it, okay? Well, I know, crazy, right? Who would name it buckwheat? That's just crazy. But these little things are called buckwheat groats. Again, silly name, I don't know. Um, but they are really crunchy and really yum. You can put it on the apple salad if you want. I mean, just go crazy healthy, I guess. Um, but buckwheat groats um, are very similar in texture, like when you eat them to like grape nuts. Um, you can make, um, instead of using oatmeal for your breakfast, um, you can use buckwheat um, and make uh, like a breakfast porridge, okay? This is, uh, buckwheat groats are really yummy on top of salad, and they're just full of amazing, amazing nutrition. Buckwheat actually will help stabilize your blood sugar. So it does contain carbohydrates, but carbohydrates that are low on the glycemic index. So what that basically means is it's not going to take your blood sugar and shoot it through the roof and then drop you really hard. So if you're eating this, it will um, not do the same, you know, as as say if you were eating um, like a pasta or something, or eating something that's sugary, you know, spiking you, that has a high glycemic index. This has a low glycemic index, super good for you. Great for diabetics. Um, now the flour, um, if you are using your flour, and if we had like a whole class, you know, like a really long class, we would make some noodles together. Um, the noodles that you can make with buckwheat uh, flour are called soba noodles. Um, so, Soba noodles um, are, does anybody taste it, soba noodles? Soba noodles are a little difficult to make just because, again, it doesn't have gluten. And gluten creates stretch. So when you have flour and you have wheat, whole wheat flour or a semolina flour, that's what your pasta is usually made of. If you look at your ingredients on your package, it's semolina flour, usually water, salt. Um, but if you're using just plain buckwheat flour, it's really difficult to work with. You have to roll between parchment paper. So um, a lot of times the soba noodles that you may buy at the store or if you're going to make them on your own um, or if you want to you know, Google the recipe, it does include a little bit of a flour that has some gluten in it. So when I'm making soba noodles, um, I do add um, a little bit of a flour, you know, a flour that does contain contain some gluten like a semolina. Makes it easier to roll out. But really yummy, something to try. But you can even just substitute it. You don't want to be, you know, I don't want to make the soda noodles, you know, that's fine. Just um, substitute it like in your cookies or um, in your, um, you know, your pancakes. If you don't want to go, um, you know, don't have a full buckwheat pancake, um, you can just you know, take some flour out and add some buckwheat flour in. Buckwheat groats can taste completely different though than buckwheat flour. Buckwheat flour has a very distinct taste to it. So I would advise you, if you're going to do that, introduce that to your family or your poker club. You may, when you're baking them some cookies, you may just want to take out like a, an eighth or a quarter of a cup of that flour and add that buckwheat flour in because again, you do need some flour to, to have some stretch unless you're using something, you know, like xanthan gum or whatever. But um, so if you if you are going to bake with it, just add it slowly so your family doesn't go, whoa, what have you done? This tastes completely different. But I will say on it, um, just real quickly on a side note, the soba noodles, um, when you boil them, they don't have that same taste. I mean, they just have like a taste of like a noodle. They're really, really good. So if you have a chance, or you see it in the supermarket, or you want to be adventurous, get that buckwheat flour, try some soba noodles, but roll them between some parchment paper. So again, that would be like a whole other cooking classes, how to make soba noodles. So that's buckwheat. Um, so if you see this in the health food store um, or in the market, pick them up.
sprinkle it on everything. It's really, really yummy, really um, crunchy, and a great thing, again, to add to if you're making your own granola bars or something where you just want to have it for breakfast. So uh, we'll keep rolling around. Oh, this is six grams of protein per cup. I don't know if you'd want a whole cup because there's a lot of fiber. So all this stuff here is really high in fiber, so add it to your diet slowly if you're not, you know, um, a big consumer of fiber already. So. The next food that I really love is kale. Okay, so kale has got has gotten a little bit more, um, you know, uh, talk in the media because it's considered now superfood. So I think even at Wise Markets, um, they have you know it's kale superfood or at Giant, um, it says kale is a superfood, and kale is is just packed with nutrients. I mean, the dark green color itself tells you it's, there's tons and tons of nutrients in there and protein in there. Um, this amount mixed with this amount that I still have in the bag, um, when you make um, these little chips, and we'll talk about how to make those, I started with a huge bundle of kale. And then when you rehydrate them or you bake them, you get this little amount. But um, kale, uh, you can use it, you know, add it to anything. Um, anybody use kale or eat kale? Um, the salad, the I salad, yeah. Kale and spinach, I buy and mix that together. That's awesome. Yeah, so kale raw is, is super um, nutritious. Add it to your soups. I like kale, actually, instead of using spinach, I like to use kale just because um, it holds up better, like in a soup and stuff. Um, but kale chips, I love kale chips. They're crunchy, they're super good, but they are expensive to buy. And if you make your own and then you eat the ones in the store, um, they have like a different taste, um, almost like a package taste. But you can make your own kale chips really super easy. You can bake them um, or you can dehydrate them. So if anybody has a dehydrator, that's how I do mine. Uh, I use my dehydrator. So I take a big, that's a bowl, if you know what I mean, like one of those big um, Tupperware bowls, uh, fill it with all my kale, drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil, put a little salt on, and put something called nutritional yeast on it. So again, oh my word, it's such a funny name for a food. Um, but nutritional yeast, and you'll get you all get a chance to try these. Um, nutritional yeast contains B vitamins. Um, it also has some other nutritional value to it, but the reason um, I eat nutritional yeast is just because it's super yummy. If you want to try nutritional yeast, um, you can buy it online. You can also, again, get it at the health food store. And um, as soon as you walk in the door, it's on the bottom shelf right there with all the vitamins. So I think they keep it there because it contains B vitamins. But um, it's called nutritional yeast uh, because, I don't know, maybe they just didn't have a better name out there. But, and it kind of looks like some fish food, but it's really, really <laughs> delicious. I'm telling you, don't be judgmental of the nutritional yeast until you have tried it on something. Uh, we eat this on popcorn. Um, you know, spray your popcorn with a little bit of oil, dump this stuff on, the kids love it. You can put it in your macaroni and cheese. It has a cheesy taste to it. Nutritional yeast, I think the way it got its name is because it's actually grown on molasses um, and then they deactivate it. Um, so it, it's not like it's an animal product. It's kind of a single cell organism that it's kind of like a mushroom. Um, you know, so, but this is not an active yeast, so you can't you know, put it in your water and get something to rye, you know, get that to rye. So it's just um, uh, something to add. It adds a lot of flavor to things I make. Um, when I do salad dressings, I add a lot of nutritional yeast. It just has a good flavor to it. Um, so we'll try those kale chips with uh, the nutritional yeast next. Um, so last thing, we'll keep this moving. It's um, time to slip it away. So I'm going to make for you, when, when people think of vegetarians, um, they ask, where do you get your protein? Um, and they're also, they think, like, I live on salads and um, I eat tofu, like, all the time. Now, I will tell you when I first started uh, changing the way that I eat, um, tofu was a little strange to me, I have to admit. Um, it felt funny in my mouth um, and it was more of a texture thing because tofu really kind of takes on whatever flavor um, you want it to take on. But um, it was kind of one of those foods where, you know, I was a little hesitant to try. So when I started eating, this is one of the first meals that I, I did eat as, as a vegetarian, um, was this uh, tofu. 
uh, stir fry. So I'm going to mix this up for you. This will be our last thing. Um, and then you'll all get a chance to try it. So again, lots of protein um, in this. Um, yeah, so we're going to add a little bit of garlic. Hopefully I won't burn it. So we'll just add a little garlic. Most of the stuff here I do have is pre-cooked, so uh, we're just going to add it. Now, tofu, you can buy tofu um, in the grocery store. You can buy it in those little packages if you want to be so adventurous to try tofu after this. Um, you can buy it in those little packages. It's a little softer. You can also buy it, um, you know, that it's surrounded by water. Um, if you buy it like that, make sure you do cook it or something before you consume it because um, it's considered like a raw product, you should cook it. Or you can buy it um, already marinated, diced, um, and ready to go. This is actually a ginger sesame tofu that I, I diced up a little bit uh, finer than it was. I'm just going to add that. We're going to add uh, some water chestnuts. This is a way that I can get my kids to eat um, some tofu because it's not something that's super duper strange, okay? And some water chestnuts. Um, mushrooms. Again, you would do all of this. Um, you could do all this in one can. I just, for sake of time, have everything all kind of ready to go. Um, we're going to add some broccoli. And we're going to add a little marinade. Now in my marinade um, is some soy sauce and uh, something, something called um, liquid aminos. Again, you can get that at a health food store online. But liquid aminos um, has lots of um, amino acids in it. And it is something that um, I do use. It's kind of almost like an alternative to um, your um, so your um, I think you have soy sauce. Yeah. So you can add a little bit of sesame oil. Adds a great little flavor. And we're going to add some of this marinade. And we're just going to let that come together. Now I serve this uh, with rice, with some brown rice, or you can serve it with quinoa. So uh, quinoa. Yeah, quinoa is yum. I mean, quinoa is um, a complete protein in itself. Um, I did add some kale to this um, and some spinach, but quinoa is um, not something that people think is like super weird um, because it just it has um, a flavor whatever you put with it, and it's similar very much to like um, couscous and, and rice. So it's a great grain uh, to add uh, to your diet. So we're gonna add that. Typically, I serve it on the side, but because um, we're not in a kitchen, I don't have uh, too many things that can heat stuff up, so we'll just let that stir. Does anybody have any questions while this is heating up? What was that marinade that you poured on? Um, the marinade, and I do have some recipes if anybody does want to try it. Um, the marinade is um, a third of a cup of soy sauce. Um, and like I said, I do add, I do have soy sauce in here, but I also have the liquid aminos. You don't have to go out and buy liquid aminos, it's nothing, but, um, but if you want to, I do usually use half soy sauce, half liquid aminos, three tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, um, a tablespoon and a half of toasted sesame oil, and a teaspoon and a half of brown sugar. And just mix that up and it makes a really tasty um, marinade. Um, so that recipe is right here. Anybody ever eat tofu? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It just kind of tastes on its the flavor of whatever you're adding uh, to it. So, uh, but people kind of get a little nervous. Uh, but I thought, ah, we'll, we'll try this and see see who would like um, to try some some tofu. Oops. So we're gonna add some quinoa to the side so you can heat it up. So I wasn't able to keep it too warm in here. Um, and you would just serve this over over the quinoa. So a great way to kind of introduce um, that to your family or to yourself. Um, 
as long as you like mushrooms, and you can add whatever vegetable you want. I just chose um, broccoli, uh, but you can add, you know, asparagus um, or whatever vegetable, whatever vegetables you want. So what is it? You know, what is that? Quinoa is a grain. It's a grain, yeah. And uh, the way you can cook quinoa is um, like a ratio of two to one. So if you have, you know, a cup of quinoa, you put a, two cups of liquid. When I make my quinoa, it, especially if I'm making it um, for something savory, um, I will put some, I'll cook it with vegetable broth instead of just plain water. But you can, you know, just cook it with water. Um, that's fine. And you can eat quinoa in place of your oatmeal. Again, it makes a porridge, so you can use quinoa for that. You can be savory or sweet. It's just like these, and you can, you'll be able to taste it here. Um, it's just like these little tiny little balls of grain. They're just fun to eat, and they're, they're really yummy. It's not cooked. Yeah. It is, yes, you do need to cook it. Oh, and the other thing, um, if you do not buy it, um, like prepackaged and with, you know, you can buy this prepackaged now, um, quinoa at the grocery store, but if you buy it in bulk, um, like at the health food store or something, um, or you, you know, Bob's Red Mill sells a bag of quinoa, you want to make sure that you wash it because it has something on it called, it's like sapsoconin or something. So it's this, um, this naturally occurring layer um, that's very bitter. Um, and it just washes off. So you just need to make sure you wash it really, really well. But the seeds are super, super tiny. Uh, so you want to do that in, um, you know, like a mesh strainer or something like that. Uh, but you do need to rinse it because if you make it that first time and you don't rinse it and you bought it, you know, from whoever in, you know, pre in that package um, and it wasn't pre-washed, you will not like it. It's super, super bitter. I think it's it's created that way just so like the birds don't eat all of it and we don't get any of it. It's just this amazing little uh, grain. Anything else? Have some good recipes now for your Oh yeah, I'm sure these will be yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I got kale chips like now with chips. the Greek yogurt dip. Oh, that's right. Let's we'll see how this is going to work. <laughs> They're lined up to come to your house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you uh, for coming and hope you enjoyed it. Kind of kept, kept it pretty close to half an hour. So, um, I do have plates and, and spoons and forks. So, if you would like to try anything that um, I made today, you're more than welcome. Hopefully, this is warm enough. It should be. So if you'd like to try it. Yeah, for kale chips, if you don't have a dehydrator, how do you do in the oven? If you don't have a dehydrator, you do it very, very carefully in the oven uh, because if you burn them, it will stink up your whole house. Um, so in the oven, you would just, you know, you rinse your kale really well, pat it dry, put your oil on it, put your salt on it, put whatever you want on it. Um, get some nutritional yeast. Well, after you taste these, I think you'll like nutritional yeast. Um, but no, you don't have to put that on. You can put whatever you want on it. And then you just lay it on your baking sheet and you bake it. Um, I just, you can bake it at 300, just watch it 300, 350, just watch it really, really closely because it um, can burn very, very quickly. And it'll be like a chew. It'll be, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah it's now. very just, interesting when you bite into it, it disappears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just flaky about, and yummy. So you're talking about maybe about 15, 20 minutes? Or yeah, it just around. depends on probably how dry your kale is when you put it in there. Yeah, how much moisture is in your kale. Um, dehydrators are... Less aren't, time than that. Ina Garten has a couple of recipes that I've made. Okay, yeah. Maybe you, 10 to... 10 to Maybe 15 at the most. Yeah. I have not made them in the oven for quite a long time just because I burnt them. Um, and I like using the dehydrator because it's still, it, it's like a raw product that you're, you know, raw food that you're eating. You've just dehydrated it. Uh, you recently made some kale chips in the oven. I, I burn them. Yeah, you just, Every and, time. and sometimes it's hard for, hard when you're in the, when it's in the oven to get it to um, completely like bake through. You know, mm -hmm. to, yeah, because sometimes this part might be a little squishy yet, and this part's, you know, right. on the verge of burning. So, yeah, a dehydrator is something, if you I mean, it's something to think about investing in. And there's some pretty, you know, fairly inexpensive ones out there. I don't have a fancy one. I have an old one that I got from um, my father-in-law that I used. Just, you stack it up, and uh, you'll have a big bowl that you'll come down, and you'll have this little bit. I had to hide this from my kids. And my kids are super healthy. I mean, I, I think 
my uh, daughter's middle name really should have been bacon because really that's like her favorite food. So don't think, you know, my kids are super healthy. I try, um, but, you know, it's, it's their choice. But because um, they're still a little young, but I do let them. And, and Liz buys some chips and, and um <laughs> You have been that girl. <laughs> <laughs> she does in Oreos. Oh, yeah. So they love to go to Liz's house, but um, they also really like kale chips. So give it a try, and, and I think they'll, they they'll don't like taste, it. They don't taste the same as what you buy in store. Similar, similar, but I it's think when you make them yourself, oh, yeah, everything's always better. It is, right? Yeah, yeah it, it just they just taste better. And you like that amount would probably I don't know be. Six dollars, <laughs> you know, ten dollars for that amount because it's like six dollars for this tiny little bit um, in the grocery store. So unless you have a better place to buy them, I I can't seem to find them at a better price. <laughs> and it's super, you know, it's super good for you. If you eat that whole bowl, you've just eaten a huge head of kale. It's crazy healthy. Anything else? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Let me get this. Turn uh, that on.